Perhaps no one in the labor movement has seen more brutality perpetrated upon the workers than I have seen. I have seen them killed in industry, worn out and made old before their time, jailed and shot if they protested. Story after story I could tell of persecution and of bravery unequaled on any battlefield. These early years saw the beginning of America's industrial life, hand in hand with the growth of factories and the expansion of railroads, with the accumulation of capital and the rise of banks, came anti-labor legislation, came strikes, came violence, came the belief in the hearts and minds of the workers that legislatures but carry out the will of the industrialists. From 1880 on, I became wholly engrossed in the labor movement. In all the great industrial centers, the working class was in rebellion. Throughout the country, there was business depression and much unemployment. In the cities, there was hunger and rags and despair. The workers asked only for bread and a shortening of the long hours of toil. The agitators gave them visions. The police gave them clubs. Particularly in the city of Chicago was the scene of strike after strike, followed by boycotts and riots. These strikes had been brutally suppressed by policemen's clubs and by hired gunmen. The grievance on the part of the workers was given no heed. The workers started an agitation for an eight-hour day. Workers went on strike across the country and the 1st of May, 1886, demanding the eight-hour day. Chicago police put an end to that movement. At McCormick Harvester Works, the police, without warning, charged upon the workers, shooting into their midst. Many were trampled under horses' feet. Numbers were shot dead. Skulls were broken. Young men and young girls were clubbed to death. On the evening of May 4th, the anarchists held a meeting to protest the killings in the shabby, dirty district known to later history as Haymarket Square. All about were railway tracks, dingy saloons, and the dirty tenements of the poor. The meeting was being peacefully conducted. The chief of police sent mounted policemen in large numbers. While one of the anarchist speakers was addressing the crowd, a bomb exploded and a number of the police were killed. The city went insane, and the newspapers did everything to keep it like a madhouse. The workers' cry for justice was drowned in the shriek for revenge. Hundreds were arrested. The leaders in the eight-hour day movement were hanged. The Sunday following the executions, the funerals were held. Thousands of workers marched behind the black hearses, not because they were anarchists, but because they felt these men, whatever their theories, were martyrs to the workers' struggles. The procession wound through miles and miles of streets, densely packed with silent people. In the cemetery of Waldheim, the dead were buried, but with them was not buried their cause. The struggle for the eight-hour day for more human conditions and relations still lives on.